Good morning all. Only a couple of days till Christmas now, so I thought I'd uh, build a little circuit on the amazing 72 plus science workshop electronics kit. And uh, what I have for you today is a flashing LED and you might be able to hear a clicking speaker, but this circuit does not use the two transistors on this set. It actually uses a different semiconductor device, which is this, the SCR or thyristor. So the thyristor or silicon controlled rectifier, as it's uh, sometimes called, although whether those two things, thyristor and SCR are actually one and the same is disputed a little bit. Um, it's a three terminal semiconductor device having four semiconductor layers. Um, three of those layers come out as terminals. There's an anode, a cathode, very much like a diode. But there's also a gate, which is the controlling element, which controls whether this diode conducts in one direction only or doesn't conduct at all. Now, the thyristor is a device which um, probably isn't used so much these days, although, although they're probably still around in very high power, high voltage applications, much bigger thyristors than this one. It's largely been overtaken in sort of medium power circuitry by the, the MOSFET. And uh, one of the interesting things about the thyristor is that once you switched it on by putting a current in through the gate, you actually can't switch it back off again. It's self latching. Um, it switches off if the current between anode and cathode drops below a certain level. And that's actually what's happening in this circuit for the flashing LED. There's so little current flowing through the device that every time it switches on, it simply drops out, it switches back off again because I'm using it really below its intended current level. So let's draw the schematic of my LED flasher circuit. We've got the uh, thyristor, the SCR here. That's got an anode and a cathode. It's also got this gate terminal. Um, I've got an LED, which I can draw there, a couple of light lines coming out of it. I've also got the speaker, um, which I will put there. And the top of the stack, I've got six volts. Down the bottom, I've got a 1K resistor, and that goes to my zero volts. Now I'm going to draw the batteries in. Um, they don't seem important but actually there is a reason why I'm going to draw that in. Six volts uh, consisting of two sets of two AA cells and I've actually got a resistor here going to the midpoint between the two batteries because we need to apply a bias uh, voltage initially so that when the gate is 0.6 volts above the cathode um, the SCR turns on, so I've given it the halfway voltage because it just happened to be available on my uh, electronics set. And then the other device in my circuit is a capacitor. It's um, an electrolytic 470 microfarads and it sits there. So when the SCR turns on, it creates a circuit um, through the SCR around here. It dumps all of the energy in the capacitor into the speaker and the LED, so we get the flash of light and the click. But unlike uh, the normal operation of a thyristor, which locks on, um, this can't because I've got a 1K here and that doesn't seem to put enough current through this circuit to actually keep the SCR latched. And so it drops out and opens up again. When it does that, this is essentially disconnected and the capacitor charges up again to the full six volts through the 1K. The voltage across the 1K resistor drops down. Now this thyristor is a current controlled device. It needs um, 0.6 volts of offset before the current will start to flow. But because it's current controlled, I've put a 5K1 there because 5K1 just happens to be the resistor value in the set. Uh, current will then flow into the gate, the transistor will turn on, it will latch itself on, but then it won't hold because of insufficient current flowing through this 1K resistor, and we get a flashing LED. 
And just in case anyone's interested in trying to duplicate this circuit, um, the thyristor in this set is a PCR 406. Now, before I came up with the idea of putting the uh, gate to the midpoint of the batteries, I actually had it on the pot. So let's go back to that. Let's take the gate, which is going through the 5K1 resistor. Let's take that wire off. Um, so now I can put the gate of the thyristor to the center point of the potentiometer. This is the potentiometer. Oh, you can't see it very well. And I'll put the two ends of the potentiometer to pause and neg. Let's do that. Right, that's neg done. Let's put a wire into uh, pause. Where's pause? That's there. And we should be able to get this thing working. Yes, there we are, with the potentiometer. Now that seems to be, yeah, it's kind of halfway. It's a bit twitchy. I was lucky, really, that the... Uh, mid voltage there worked pretty well so I can speed it up and then it just fails some distance off um, full positive full negative it won't flash either there it's flashing really quite slowly or is it I don't think it is quite yeah so um, quite a small range of movement of the potentiometer to get the biasing voltage right um, so that this thing starts to conduct. Uh, of course, there's no 5K1 there now. The circuit's slightly different. It's just a resistor down from six volts to the gate and another resistor from the gate down to zero volts. But yes, it works by biasing it with the potentiometer or you can connect the gate through a current limiting resistor to the power supply midpoint. Now, what about, what about this 1K resistor? I've changed it to 100 ohms, uh, which is just about enough resistance to not burn this LED out at six volts. And you can see that, although I can turn the thing off by turning this fully to ground, I think that's fully to ground, I'm pretty sure it is. When it comes on, you can see the light and the click, it just latches because there's enough current flowing through the thyristor that it latches on and it stays on don't quite know how I'm managing to turn it off by pulling the gate hard to ground. I assume that's hard to ground. Perhaps I ought to check that. Yeah, so if I turn the uh, pot towards this side, it goes to zero volts. Raise it up. It sits at about 2.8, 2.7 volts right through the middle of its travel. And at the far end, it's 4.9 volts strange that it's very flat in the middle there must be something to do with the thyristor semiconductor steering the voltage on the pot but this is definitely the zero volt end as i raise that up the scr turns on and latches on but i cannot get it to oscillate with 100 ohms in the bottom leg of my circuit interestingly wikipedia has two separate articles one for the thyristor and one for the silicon controlled rectifier and there is some question over whether the SCR is a sub um, model of the thyristor group of components. There's also a possibility that the SCR is actually a trade name, silicon controlled rectifier, and not a device type. Um, but you'll have to read both these articles really to pick out uh, which is which. The thyristor name incidentally came about because there was a vacuum tube device called the Thyrotron. And this was the sort of transistorized version of that. But uh, both articles show you that the thyristor has this four layer PNPN construction. There are three junctions, of course, between those four layers. And you can see where the anode, the cathode and the gate are connected. It also gives you a sort of transistor equivalent with these close coupled PNP and NPN transistors, which latch on once the gate is triggered and a current is uh, flowing through those two transistors, the only way to switch it off is to momentarily remove that current. And that's why this device is often used in AC circuits, because of course the alternating current waveform has the zero crossing point where every uh, 100 milliseconds it would be in the UK, the uh, current through this device would be shut off. And of course this latching mechanism would unlatch. So very often these things were used for 
uh, controlling uh, mains, lights, and motors, and power switching devices. Right, let's just put this back how I had it. Let's get rid of the pos and neg wires on there. Uh, I'll put the gate of the device back through my 5K1 resistor, and I'll connect uh, the other side of that, not to ground, but from there, can't see what I'm doing, up to this battery midpoint, which now doesn't work. What have I done wrong? Oh, I connected that to the 1K resistor, whereas it should be connected to the 5K1 resistor. And now I've pulled out the wire that goes from the 1K resistor, which is on the cathode, to ground. Better put that back. And there's my flashing LED again. Um, and I will link to the two Wikipedia articles on the Thyristor and the SCR. And I'll also link to another article, which I can't show because I'm not sure of the copyright status, but um, which says that uh, a Thyristor can be used as um, a serviceable relaxation oscillator. I'll link to that in the description below as well. But uh, there we are for the moment. That's it. SCR used as a lead flasher and a speaker clicker. Cheerio and Merry Christmas.